Welcome to Greenie's Garden. Okay. Hey, what's up, Green Army? It's Brandon and Alyssa. Hey, guys. And we hope all of you guys are having an awesome day today. We have a really fun video because it's about you guys. We're so grateful for your love, your support, um, you know, on our YouTube videos here. I don't know, it just really makes me happy. I know, we get so many cool comments and we try to do our best to get back to them all. Right. And I would say 90% we get back to. I say we're 90% good at that. So, we wanted to make a video today where we actually read some of your comments and talk about them a little bit more in depth. Right. So again, we really want to make this video to incorporate you guys. I mean, we got mad love for you guys. Again, we're so grateful for your love and support. And we just want to throw you guys out there. Get to your comments on video and just kind of have fun with it. Yeah, I, mean, I think this will be kind of cool. Yeah, I'm excited. We've been wanting to do this actually for like a really long time. So I know. I think maybe a year ago we actually sat down and filmed the video and scrapped it for some reason. And we never posted. There's probably a video of that out there. Uh, it probably exists somewhere. It's in our phones. <laughs> but we're going to get into the video, guys. We're going to answer a few questions, get a little bit in depth, and just kind of have fun with you guys. So should we start with the first comment? Yeah, so we've got a handful here, and right now we're pulling all these from YouTube, but we do get a lot of awesome questions on Instagram and Facebook, and yep. I think that's all we're on Grateful. right now. Grateful. So Grateful. we're going to start off with some YouTube comments. Um, so the first one is from Malu in America. And this was on our backyard tour that we just posted. Wait, we, we know Malu. We know Malu. Okay, we Malu, <laughs> if you're watching this, we owe you a Peruvian apple cactus. We're going to put ourselves out there. That was like, what, two years ago? Maybe longer. Maybe longer. Just communication. Email us, greeniesgarden at gmail.com. And let's meet up, Malu. Let's, yeah. I'd love to check out your house. Have us come over. Well, and I don't know if you even remember this, but like a couple years ago, we made a video where we were raffling off, I think, three Peruvian apple cactus. And uh, we got a chance to visit two of the winners. And they're both awesome people. Right. And so, yeah. If you still are interested in that, email us and we would love to get that to you. We have a Proving Apple Cactus for you for sure. We're oh, like yeah. overloaded with them, so. I think we counted like 10 or 15 the other day. Hey, you can see them <laughs> over there. So, okay, what was Malu in America's question, love? <laughs> so, Malu said, how is Happy doing? Happy! <laughs> how are you? <laughs> happy is our Sultana tortoise. Yep, third largest tortoise in the world. Right now, he's like probably one of the babyest tortoises. In the yeah, world. he's the third smallest tortoise like in the that world. Big baby. But okay, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I think Happy's doing good. I think he's pretty happy. He <laughs> eats so many greens. I'm jealous. I mean, his favorite snack, which we found out he'll run for it, is oh, watermelon. Watermelon, like it's so crazy because he'll literally like. He's a pretty slow guy. Not putting him down, but he will <laughs> run if you give him a watermelon. It's like putting him on caffeine. It's pretty cute. But he also loves hibiscus flowers. Right. Um, today he had some kale and mustard greens and lettuce. And a little bit of grass. So, I mean, Happy's pretty good at eating his greens. Yeah, he's he's a pretty happy tortoise. So, yeah, Malu in America, thank you for your comment. And Happy is doing awesome. And we're very grateful for that. Um, let's jump into the second comment. Okay. So that was from our recent video, right? Yeah, that was from the tour. Okay, cool. So this next one is from our summer garden tour. Whoa. Seeing a trend here. Yeah. And this is from Laura Gonzalez. And she says, I live in Tucson and my yard is basically a vacant lot. What is the first step to garden in this heat? It's not hot anymore. Right, but we get what you're saying. And we started with a vacant lot too. It was, right. I think it was dirt and re weeds and rocks over here. And yep. then some dead grass on this side. Dead grass. And that was it. <laughs> it was not very green. <laughs> so what would your opinion be? Like, what would be the first step to start gardening? First step to start gardening is wear some sunscreen. No, on a serious note, I would say the first step in gardening is, I don't know, I feel like there could be so many right answers, but I'm not speaking for you. I think the best way to start is knowing what you want to eat. Yeah. You know, knowing what you want to grow in your backyard because, you know, we've been to certain places where a food forest is a few years old. We went to an awesome food forest. Beautiful, by the way. Home, I don't know how many trees. It was like a jungle. Right. But the lady there said she didn't even like any of the fruit trees she was growing. I know. She was a good sport about it. But yeah, it broke my heart, though. I know, because she just mentioned, like, you know, she was showing us around, I don't really like this fruit. I don't really like that fruit. I mean, I feel like some people grow fruit trees in different ways. Some of it's just to watch the tree grow. Right. And it's, you know, some of it's just exactly for the fruit. But you've got to know what you like to eat, because, I mean, that's your property. 
Well, and I think part of her problem too was that she knew she liked apples, but she planted a variety she didn't end up liking. Right. So, you make, yeah, great point. Plant what you know you like. Um, as far as vegetable gardens, plant what's in season. Um. <laughs> Good point. Okay, sorry. Good point. Well, I think that was one of our first failures when we first started doing vegetable gardening. We were planting tomatoes in December and wondering why they weren't making it. <laughs> and we were planting lettuce in the summer and plant what's in season. Um, in Arizona, we can grow all 12 months out of the year, but there's some plants that like warm weather and some that like cold weather. Seriously, I can't say it again. That's such a good point because if you don't grow what's in season, you're going to fail. I mean, that's just, that's what happens. You might get lucky. True. But yeah, you're not setting yourself up for success. Right. So just experiment with it, you know, like um, grow what's in season. Like Alyssa was saying, we have our summer veggies in Arizona and then we have our winter veggies. So if you stick to that list and work with Mother Nature, you seem to get some pretty good results with that. Yeah. I think that's a great question. And then, oh, so one last piece of advice. Yeah. Depending on if you're talking about vegetable gardening or like fruit gardening, um, create a microclimate. Plant a shade tree. Right. Because once you get some shade in your backyard, you can start growing a lot of things that would not tolerate full sun. Right. And if I could throw some in there, specifically <laughs> the Tipawana Tipu. Yeah, are they in the background right now? I don't know if you can see them, but you guys should go with that tree. We made a video about <laughs> it. I won't speak for you, but it's my favorite shade tree. It's my favorite shade tree. Uh, but no, thank you so much for the comment on our summer garden tour. We're so grateful for you leaving that comment for us. And I hope that kind of gives you like an idea of kind of where to start. Right. So we're going to the third comment, right? Yeah, number two. Okay. Number three. Whoa. Okay, this was a comment that was on our We Quit Our Jobs video. We... <laughs> that was in February Makes 2017. Makes feel crazy. Um, we quit our jobs. Yep. Working for an office. Yep. It was a scary moment. I mean, in our life, I think I can speak for both of us. It was scary and exciting and emotional in a million different ways. Right. But I can say, long story short, I am so grateful that we took that decision together because I couldn't be happier. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So this question is from Tony Yamoka. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, what are you guys doing now for a living? Good question. We have like the funnest jobs in the world, I feel like. I know. So we decided to start our own business. Um, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought that in a million years. It's awesome and scary all at the same time. Right. But we build raised vegetable beds, raised garden beds. Yeah. We plant fruit trees. We feed fruit trees. Yeah. We help people. We basically just try to help people grow their own food. Um, I did, okay, I could have never imagined that my passion in life would have to do with trees, vegetable gardens. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. Really. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like you said, applying those microclimates for, you know, your backyards. I mean, we love helping people, you know, create what we have in our yard because every time we do something or, you know, tell you guys information, it's something that we've done in our backyard. Yeah. You know, just trial and error because I feel like the failures, I'm grateful for those. Well, we had so many questions when we first started doing all this and sometimes you can't get answers to that stuff. So it's nice, I feel like, to be able to help those people um, with like the exact problems they're experiencing and kind of giving direct advice from, we're not professionals by any means. Right. Because we are still, a lot of this stuff is experimental, but we like to be able to share our advice our knowledge, what we've learned, our, our passion. I mean, it's really, yeah. And I do it with my best friend. Like, <laughs> seriously, I'm so grateful for that. Every day, you know, to be able to work with my best friend, my wife, um, you know, as my, my teammate, you know, as my partner. I mean, just, it's such an amazing feeling. And I encourage you guys, you know, to just have your best friend, um, you know, and just do what you can with them and just really grow from each other. I feel like we've learned so much together. You know, my weaknesses, she comes in and I feel like it's vice versa. Um, so, I don't know, I'm just, I can't say it enough. I'm really, really, really grateful um, that we work together. Yeah, I am too. So, yeah, I mean, to answer the question, we're running our own business, yeah. we're building raised <laughs> beds, planting fruit trees, you know, keeping them on a food schedule. Um, if you guys ever want to go see some of our work, go to greenydigs.com and you guys can check out our work. Yeah, or our, our Instagram page, we've yeah. Green East Garden, we've got a million photos on there too. We even have a Facebook, um, so you guys can go check that out, you don't have to, but if you guys ever want to check it out, we're really, really grateful for that. And we post on those like every day. Yeah, about, about. yeah, about. 
so. I can't believe that was from when we, we quit our jobs. My mind was just like, <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, whoa, like, that's a crazy feeling. And we got that question probably a hundred times. We didn't actually get back to any of the comments on that video at the time. That was such a... So this is just the most recent example of that question. Right, that was just such a whirlwind and like so many emotions were going on. But again, I'm grateful for today and what we've done. I'm grateful for you guys and for you. I love you. I love you too. Okay, so great question. Thank you so much for leaving that on our We Quit Our Jobs video. Um, so let's go to the next comment. So this one will be number four? Uh, yes. Okay. This one also comes from our most recent video, which was our silent backyard tour. Just kind of walked around the yard for 15 minutes and didn't Complete say a word. Complete silence. It was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, I think it was fun and different. So this is a great question, and I feel like we get this one all the time, just worded mm. different ways. This is from Robin, this is from Robin Coughlin. And Hi Robin. <laughs> Hi Robin. <laughs> And they say, did you revise your in-ground irrigation after you laid out a mapped plan of your plants and trees, or did you build the garden first and then plan the irrigation? Two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like, because we did everything first, right? Meaning planted our fruit trees, put our islands in, which, you know, that's, I love having islands back here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like we put everything in first and then decided to do irrigation, which may be backwards for you know some people. Well, and technically we don't really have irrigation back here. I mean, we have, right. we have one line that goes around the perimeter and then shoots out to our side yard because we don't really have a hose that's long enough to get out there. And that's kind of the only irrigation we have set up. Yeah, it's not really like, yeah, you know, you're right. It's not like full irrigation, a bunch of valves set up. We hand water this yard. I get so much peace from that though. You. You're uh, killing it, you all take care of the yard. It's both of us, but I mean, do you guys hand water your garden? I feel like it, it's such an amazing feeling and it really gets me connected with the plants. That and it's like, it slows you down, I feel 100%. like. 100%. It's kind of, I feel like that's the most therapeutic part about gardening, which is sitting there with a hose and... Yeah. Especially in the summer, because you're like, hang on, I'll get to you in a second and while you're watering <laughs> the one guy. It's like waiting in line of like 100 people. You're just like, I'll be there. Like, <laughs> you're just going around. But also a quick note is, I feel like it really helps to, you know, hand water your yard because um, I feel like you learn a lot about different trees and, you know, what yes. what watering the, you know, the mango tree might want compared to like a mulberry, you know, compared to your raised bed garden, which in the summertime, you could be watering one, two, three times a day. Yeah, it gets pretty intense. Right, it gets hot here in Arizona. I mean, if you guys live out here, you know that. Um, but yeah, I mean, such a great question. You know, water's life. Um, I believe that you know irrigation is good to have, but you should really get out in your garden and hand water it. I mean, well, and especially if you go on vacation, if you travel a lot, true. having irrigation. We did some garden sitting jobs for some um, for some clients over the summer, right? And the ones that had irrigation set up and then just wanted us to like double check and add extra water, their plants look fantastic the entire time. They're getting that consistent water, right? Like you said, good point. Seriously, good point is you're going to go on vacation probably, you know, and you won't be there to hand water your plants. So having that irrigation system is going to be that backup. Or if you work a regular job and you're gone all day, especially in the summer when it's so hot. I know. <laughs> it's nice to have that backup plan. So if you're doing the whole food forest thing, I would say, I would say set up your irrigation or at least a basic idea, like maybe kind of go around the perimeter and have an idea of how many plants you want to put in. And that way you can kind of tap into that over time. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Because once you get all these trees in the ground and you're ready to set up irrigation, you got to work around them and they're really I know. Like, <laughs> we're trying to get some irrigation set up in the front yard and there's just a lot of plants that are kind of in the way. Right, no, that's a good point. Again, you got to like work around it. Um, I think having a plan is a good idea. Yeah. You know, and maybe having understanding of maybe where your tropical zone is, where your shade trees are going. Right. Because those need to be on their own valves. Like a citrus watering is different than a shade tree. Right. So and gardens are going to need more water than trees. And right. So to answer your question, we did not have irrigation in first. We planted our trees and then kind of added some irrigation around that. So great question. Yeah, that's a good one. Water's life. So. Thank you so much, Robin, for commenting on our recent silent backyard tour. Grateful. And then maybe just one more tip as far as yeah. watering goes. What's up? Um, one thing that we've learned is really beneficial is to take like a five gallon bucket and then turn the hose on on whatever speed you like and count how many seconds it takes to fill up that five gallon bucket. And Good that point. way, 
like ours on full speed is about 45 seconds, I think. About, yeah. To fill five gallons. Good memory. So then whenever we sit down on a tree, when we have it on full speed like that, every 45 seconds we know that tree's getting about five gallons of water. So I feel like that's kind of a good way, yeah. especially when you're still trying to get used to like what your trees need. You can kind of monitor how much they're getting just by counting. It's, like, it's, it's so easy too, just get the bucket, fill it up with the hose and have a, like a little timer on your phone. Just yeah. hit that start button. As soon as you put that water in the bucket and then just stop it when it's done. And that's a good point. Oh, one Mississippi. Two, two Mississippi. Mississippi. Three <laughs> Mississippi. Thank you again so much, Robin, for your comment. Such a great comment yeah, right there. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think this is our fifth comment, right? Yeah. Okay. So this one's number five. It's from the same video. Silent Backyard Tour. Silent Backyard Tour. Sorry, the mosquitoes are kind of starting to get me. I know, it got me right on my foot right there. They're still out. I know. Aren't they supposed to be gone after like 50 degrees at night? Yeah, and it's supposed to be 47 tonight, so... 47 tonight. So Jesse Alonzo says, you guys have an amazing backyard. Do you uh, think I can grow tropical fruit trees here in Las Vegas? First of all, thanks for the love. Seriously, that's so awesome. Yeah. Thanks for the compliment. We appreciate every comment we get like that. Yeah, that's, I'm super grateful. So Las Vegas is a desert. Right. Where we live is a desert. Um, the Sonoran tropical, Desert. <laughs> <laughs> tropical fruit trees grow in the tropics. Right. So absolutely give it a shot like we encourage everybody to at least try especially if there's something you really love like go for it our favorite fruit both of our favorite fruit is mangoes yep. so by all means we will always be trying to grow a mango tree back you know me <laughs> <laughs> no but that's a good point is we are in the desert we're trying to grow tropical trees but you know yeah. that's part of that's part of the fun and the challenge i mean but just understanding that you are taking a big risk um, you know, planting fruit trees, like, you know, tropical in the desert is probably strike one against us for doing this. It gets a lot hotter in the summers and a lot colder in the winters when you live in the desert than it would in Florida, Hawaii, or Mexico, right. or India. But I love it, though. Just throwing it out there. Like, I like the challenge. It's, yeah, definitely fun. Yeah, it's just fun. But, I mean, it's, it is good to know the risk. But have fun with it, guys. Like, you know us by now. Just go for it. Um, you know, really experiment in your backyard. And I would say start small, maybe. Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> we planted maybe like 20 or 30 tropical fruit trees back here and then kind of watched them all die <laughs> one by one. <laughs> I know, it was, we've killed trees. Like, yeah. we lost so many mango trees, which it's depressing, you know, because like plants are living things to me. Right. Um, so, you know, it really hurts to, you know, have to lose trees, but I feel like it made us stronger, though. Stronger gardeners, for sure. We kind of, we know what we're battling and Right. And there's things you can do. So right. when it's really hot, you can add shade. You can plant a shade tree. Right. Um, definitely put mulch on the ground to help retain moisture. Um, plant density, I feel like it's really important. So have ground covers, have little plants around it, kind of create humidity. And that helps in the wintertime too. It's that microclimate. Yeah, it's it like my down favorite the word. And yeah. then also giving them extra food too. Organic food. Organic food. We're organic. Because they're, they're in an environment they don't really want to be in. So making sure they have absolutely everything they need, I feel like is really important. Right. Yeah, so. I, no, I think they're great tips. Las Vegas is cool. We've been to yeah. Las Vegas a couple times. I remember it being really windy there. It was, it was really windy. Yeah, it was really windy, um, but cool environment. There's a, there's a lot of cool people there. Yeah. Um, we got mad love for you guys in Las Vegas. Um, but yeah, just go for it. I mean, just know the risk that you're taking. We're in the Sonoran Desert. Um, but you know, just taking that risk, guys. I mean, as long as you could you know, handle that, um, and just all I ask is just if you're gonna make a mistake learn from it so, yeah. I mean, To answer the question Do you think I can grow tropical fruit trees here in Las Vegas? Go for it. Yeah, definitely worth trying. Thank you so much for the comment Jesse on our recent silent backyard tour All right, so this is the sixth one. I feel like this is kind of a weird one to end on but this is the sixth comment that we picked for today Okay, from the same tour video. Okay um, Rodney Knox wants to know how old our moringa tree was that we showed in the video at about the two minute 45 seconds and we pulled that up and i believe it's the one we grew from seed right yeah big one back there i don't know if you guys can see it like looking from here so, i'm not sure <laughs> was that two and a half years ago i'd say it's safe to say like two and a half years Maybe. so that tree's two and a half years old um moringa is yes. an incredible all edible fruit uh what do you call the fruit tree uh, not sweet, juicy fruit. No, oh no. Legumes, juicy fruits. But it's a, it's a drought tolerant tree. Um, 
the leaves are edible and full of iron and vitamin, vitamin C, C. Vitamin A. Right. Potassium. You go online, you'll see some crazy stuff on there. Yeah, Google the Moringa tree, a.k.a. the miracle tree, guys. Or the drumstick tree or the horseradish tree. It's got <laughs> it is kind of hard to eat just the leaves, but I mean, just knowing the nutrition... Just knowing the nutrition... What? No value? <laughs> just knowing the nutritional value... <laughs> Um, of that tree, you know, is really amazing because, like uh, Alyssa said earlier, we grew it from seed. Um, it's probably like, what, 25 feet tall now, maybe? Yeah, it's huge. Um, produces so many pods, and what's cool is, is you can eat the pods when they're green, or if you let them mature, that's where you get your seeds from, guys. I mean, it's cool because we pass those out to our friends, um, and I think it's a good tree to start with, though, because... It's pretty much like almost 100% guaranteed like to grow. Yeah, and they're, they're drop tolerant when they get older and oh my gosh, the flowers. The hummingbirds and butterflies and bees love the flowers. Like, Me too. <laughs> they're kind of horseradish if you eat them. Right. But they smell pretty and it's just so cool seeing so many hummingbirds in the yard. It's like their favorite tree. Yeah, it brings the bees, guys. Bees are so important. Yeah. I know a lot of people that are scared of bees. Being stung by a bee would be no fun. You would know that. Yeah, I just got stung the second time, but last week. Second time. I've never been stung by a bee, so. Uh, not the funnest. Yeah, so you should be saying that, not me. <laughs> but it, from her reaction, it doesn't seem like it feels good. So. But um, we still definitely want bees in the yard, and. Yeah, I feel like you just don't mess with them. Well, I can't say that because you weren't messing with the bee. Um, it just happened, but no, like bees are so important, guys. Um, you know. They live out in nature. I mean, this is their their land. This is their, you know, space. And it, it's really cool to bring those hummingbirds, um, you know, to pollinate all of our different mm -hmm. flowering trees. Um, and of course, the bees, guys. I say it a hundred times. Bees are so important to our environment. We need them. Yes, we do need them. And they're dying off. So anything we can do to help them, I think, is really important. And it feels so good to be able to, like, just a little off topic. I love that our backyard is not 100% all edible because I feel like we really cater to the animals. I mean, we cater to the, the hummingbirds, the bees, you know what I mean? Just the, the birds even, I mean. Yeah, it's cool, because even though not everything in the yard is edible for humans, um, it seems like something loves to eat everything in the yard. You've got good I bugs, know. <laughs> good bugs and bad bugs, and you have lizards and mosquitoes. Mosquitoes <laughs> right now just got me. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's really cool. It's kind of like we have we get to do a little nature walk every single day and it, it does kind of feel like we're out in nature because there's just so much life out in our yard right so and I don't know, I'm just grateful for that you know it's yeah I feel like trees have taught me patience yep and I feel like I take that with me on my day-to-day -day life and I'm grateful for our trees you know like some people say like your trees talk to you I get that I feel like you know it's more of like a vibe thing like when you're going out there talking to your trees you know giving them the organic foods yeah. you know like they'll show you the love back. And I feel like you both can benefit from that. Um, it's crazy how trees can just make you feel so good. Dude, I know, it's so cool. It's so exciting. I just love doing this in our backyard. Um, you know, my wife and I, this is, this is all us. You know, we're a, we're a big team here. Um, and I just love coming out here every morning with some coffee by the pond. I mean, just even if we're over here by Happy. Yeah, watching um, sunrises and sunsets and looking at the Milky Way at night. And I know, I just, I hope you guys are gardening out there because it's such a peaceful, um, just a peaceful thing to do, guys. It brings the tranquility also having a pond in your yard. And, um, well, and I feel like, so when we first started doing this whole gardening thing, before we got into edibles and organic gardening and stuff, we really wanted a lawn for our dogs. I know. And I feel like they like the yard even better without having a big grass lawn because like Green will go explore. She goes and checks on Happy every day and then... <laughs> She does. She goes and checks on the pond. She'll kind of sniff around and look at stuff. And, and she like follows the pathways and she'll like get into the jungle by the bamboo and kind of like, you know, just like see how her yard's doing. And yeah, she really does. It's so crazy. She checks on happy guys. Like, yeah, I love her. And we have our little pathway so she still gets to run around and do crazy dog stuff. But right. like, I, I know that's one concern a lot of people have. Is, you know, I don't want to put too many fruit trees out there because my dogs run the grass lawn. Oh yeah, right, you right. Know, they, I don't know, take them to the park, I guess. Right. So, that was the last comment, right? Yeah, the moringa. Uh, we kind of went off on that one a little bit. No, that's fine. I, I can talk about plants all day, you? <laughs> yeah. I can just sit here and talk about plants all day. But, 
yeah guys again we just wanted to really make this video for you guys and get you involved you know I'm sorry we couldn't do all the comments um, you know but just keep showing love and support you know and uh, well, keep sending your comments in on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook and we'll do this again yeah I, I think I have fun well and some of those comments I don't know if we we're gonna type that it would take us 20 minutes just to type right but we, yeah so yeah just thank you guys so much for always showing us love support I mean we got mad love for you guys um, and you know just thank you so much for supporting us um, until next time I didn't know where I was going there. I was just gonna say <laughs> but no guys thank you so much for watching today's video and as always we hope all of you guys have an awesome day Bye, guys.